<laughs> can you, uh, any of you like to touch upon uh, how the studio and the, uh, you know, the, the atmosphere or how the workflow happened changed, mm -hmm. either compared to what you knew of Soup to be before we started, but also within the time you were there, did it change significantly? Please say yes, please say yes, please say yes. For the better. <laughs> or worse. Oh, can me, I, me. Well, anyone. Can I, can I actually, can I sort of take that real quick? Anyone so, can say anything. So when I got there, I, I didn't mention this on the last question, but um, when I got there, the, the pipeline, the production pipeline that was set up was actually, and I think of like, I'm not going to name names, but I think back to people that were there when we got there like. that stayed longer, <laughs> that mm -hmm. stayed on. But um, so, so Aya Fukuda. Now, it's set up, now it's set up where it's, you know, there's a design department, there's a storyboard department, there's an animation department. It's How not it should set up be. like that right now. Mm -mm. It was set up until it's we folded. It's not set up like anything. <laughs> That's <laughs> emptiness. <laughs> so, so there was no pipeline. The pipeline was like, give it to, you know, Joe Smith. Who would do? He would do his own designs, his own storyboard, his own animation. Joe was the best. And so the the level, <laughs> poor Jack, the level of animation varied so much between the, the the employees that when you watched it, it was like one scene was amazing, and then it was like, you know, uh, 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 and then kind of okay, and then amazing, and then uh, it, it was crazy. So we put in a pipeline where we we put people up where it's like. You're, you're in charge of storyboards, this is your team, you do all the storyboards. And then it made it much more cohesive. So, so there you go. That actually segues okay, okay. into, uh, I was going to ask about the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, could each of you touch upon you know, what your role was in the pipeline from the business end to the script thumbnails, directing side, to say storyboard animation, Hannah? Okay, I yeah. think you should start. Starting with... No, wait, it should be Dave. Let's start with Dave. Start with Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how did you get jobs? <laughs> how did you get yeah. uh, projects to begin the procedure of the animation pipeline? Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no real, real formula. Um, we, we pitched original shows. We were also sometimes called out of the blue to, to produce shows. Um, once it went into production, it was, um, you know, we had a formula, and each show had its own pipeline. Uh, to match what they expected, the money they had, whatever it was. Um, is, that answer, is that answering your right question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve? Did just anyone have it? Yeah, but yeah. Like, uh, can you describe, help describe the soup pipeline from, from your end? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I would, each episode of, let's just take Warrior Girl for instance. Yeah. Um, you get uh, outlines from the writers, so myself and then a couple other people, um, which would change over the years, would make notes being like, Chuck would never say that, and things like that, um, <laughs> which they would ignore, and then they would go and write a These script. These were LA writers, so they ignored Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would get the, the script back, and you make notes on that, and then finally uh, we'd go to the records. Uh, getting the audio for the episodes was great. Um, our, Old uh, audio director, uh, he really. <laughs> this is like, being filmed. What? I know. I, I like him. Uh, he was great. He got like the the most out of all the actors. He'd get a million different takes. Uh, you know, the funniest stuff would end up on the cutting room floor because they'd be the actors would be swearing and doing like yeah. whatever. But it was a lot of fun to go through everything, and then you'd get it. Um, a lot of times, your scripts were really overwritten too. So you get like a. I get like at times like 20 minutes of dialogue that you have to whittle down to, I don't know, you want around like between like nine and 10, or around like 10 minutes or so. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was. But you have to do a lot of chopping um, there, a lot of editing there, and that was fun too. And then from that, doing the uh, <laughs> thumbnails, which I hated. No, that was, the story part, that was, that, that was the best part. I mean, I liked doing that a lot. Um, and then pass that off to the storyboarders, uh, which Alex uh, was the last of the greats. And Paul. Oh, and uh, you too. Man. Oh, yeah. You too. And anyone else in the audience who <laughs> might think I'm insulting them. Uh, and, and of course, uh, yeah, the, the background team. I do all these like really like crappy sketches and then, oh, see, okay. and then see everybody like take it and be like, oh, wow, that looks really good. Like, yeah. that's. They were really, really talented really people. Huh? And, and beautiful. 
Yeah. Intense backgrounds. <laughs> but uh, so real quick, so um, before Hannah goes, um, so so to me it was always amazing because I you know I'm, I wasn't always on the floor or in all the meetings and stuff, but to see like you know to start with the script, hear the audio. See the boards, like it got better and better and better and better at every stage, which is pretty amazing, I think. I honestly would be amazed. Yeah. I mean, because every time we would, I would get thumbs from Steve, and they were very good and they were very well thought out in terms of layout. And um, at the same time, I would also get backgrounds from Jen Blihaj, who was uh, the, the art director at the time, and I would be flabbergasted by how they could basically turn sketches into full-fledged, amazing, full-color backgrounds, because I am totally unqualified for that, but they were. So it always seemed like, even on the art side, kind of like magic, that yeah. things would just kind of happen, and they'd come to me, and then things would happen on that end, and they'd go to animation. And you guys would add, you know, your take on it, your jokes, your your timing, and I think and then it would get better, and then the animation would be better, well, better-ish. And then, uh, well, it's a limited show. Yeah. And then uh, I was always amazed by the final product. Whether it was a good, or good well-written show or, or not, it was always a better final product. I will. Um, I got to say about Steve is that sometimes some real terrible scripts came in and he was able to make <laughs> sense out of gibberish. And that's important, I think, during that process because a lot of gibberish came in and he had the ability to take out the stuff that wasn't necessary, those jokes that weren't funny, and he could see the jokes that weren't funny and be able to see things in motion without having them be in motion. And that was so helpful as an animator at the time. I was, for Word Girl, I was an animation supervisor because you don't want things set up that you can't do them. And especially with, this show was originally set up to be limited animation and limited Got style. Less and less limited as it went on. And yeah. as it went on, we just went nuts. Yeah. Like, I think every episode had at least 400 characters. I'm not even lying. Like, sometimes there's like crowd scenes that just carnival. Have, yeah, it's like, oh, this is at the carnival. This is at the museum. derby. This is the museum. And it just would like, it would need so many different characters. And it was never just Becky and Bob doing something small. It was always like a huge thing. And people felt like rose to the challenge. Um, again, much to their, the decline of their health, I think. It's because people felt like they really need to prove themselves to make something better. Everybody loved the show. Everybody put in their own little jokes. Like, if you just look at the backgrounds, yeah. like, the amount of jokes that background people put in to an episode is incredible. Like, of course you're going to watch shows like Steven Universe <coughs> and be like, oh, look, there's that one crystal that's in every episode. But, like, in Word Girl, we had, like, this whole love story of the old couple... And no, 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 the old, old ladies and the guy without the shirt, which was actually one of Mike's friends. Um, but like, he made this amazing romance and we got to see it in the background. Then we also saw Dave's wife give birth to a child in the background of the, the in episode. In between shots. In between shots. Like she was pregnant one shot, it cut away, and then she comes back and she's holding a kid. And you did the same thing. Like the things that you would put in the show and then it would just build from there. And I thought that that was the best part. Like, Having it wasn't like private jokes because if you've ever been on Tumblr and seen the Word Girl fandom, they notice. <laughs> they found it, and they haven't found everything, but they found a lot of it. There was uh, so as a story, I was the only storyboarder, so I would be alone doing this, <laughs> and it would, it would just be it's like boring. I have no one to talk to, so I do things like that to entertain myself. But things in the background, which, and I'm, since I'm the only one doing it, I would just keep doing it and have these stories going on. And eventually it got to that we would have um, this like one weird character that like Alex kind of took ownership of and would put in every episode. Um, that was my favorite thing. Who was that? There was a very odd looking uh, female character with a uni <laughs> yeah. unibrow yeah. Uh, voiced by Maria Bamford in the most deadpan delivery ever. Wasn't she British or something? No. Oh, she yeah. she was just, she, yeah, very quiet. And uh, then you put her in another episode, and I kind of fell in love with her. And I started putting her in every episode I possibly could in the background. And then the, another the episode had a little, uh, like an ugly dog that yeah. Would yeah, became her dog. Movie. With a unibrow. Yeah. Yes. Match made movie. in heaven. It's actually the same eyes. Pretty yeah. much, yeah, yeah. Exact same eyes, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, one <laughs> creepy that you're saying the people Tumblr. on Tumblr or whatever. Um, <laughs> who might see this. Anybody here on Tumblr? <laughs> Tumblr, oh, anyway. Tumblr? Are you one of them? One From of the, the Word Girl fandom. From the five-person Word Girl fandom. 
maybe, I think it was something uh, Liz Breen, like an old uh, producer, <laughs> she wasn't old, but <laughs> at this point. Past. Past tense. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I would put my family in there, and it was like, I'd have my, my wife and my annoying. kids in some episodes um, to annoy Dave, and <laughs> no, there's Steve's brother people again. on <laughs> Tumblr would know, they'd be like, oh, that's uh, Steve Young's <laughs> wife there. And it's like, how do you know who I am, what I look like? Because they're pretty good um, caricatures of, of each of us. Everyone who worked there got their own character, yeah. which was put in an episode and all that. Um, but that they, I don't know. They knew my family. It was a little Your address. disheartening. You put it out there. Yeah. What did I? Ever, I don't know. It's like being a celebrity. Just expect it. You got me there. Case closed. <laughs>